Well, let's go fossil collecting along the Jurassic coast. Welcome to Lyme Regis Fossils. This is our channel on YouTube, all about fossil collecting. Let's see these sea urchins I found. I've been fossil collecting over October half term week. This is a nice We're fossil find. The sea urchin fossil find out of the rock. Wow, look at that. Just in here. Yeah. That fossil sea urchin is. There you go. on top. That's a sea urchin. That is Monmouth Beach down there in the distance and you can see Seven Rocks Point and before you get to Seven Rocks Point there is the wonderful Ammonite graveyard. First of all you can see there on the notices the do's and don'ts along the Jurassic coast. You must not go near the dangerous cliffs they're liable to fall suddenly and without warning and over October half term so far during the weekend I've seen a lot of people not too near the cliffs they're heeding the warnings which is good but I reckon that the day trippers will be down and they'll be right underneath the cliffs I really do wonder why people have that notion that they can go right near those dangerous cliffs that fall down so rapidly. You see the paper shales flutter down and then also too, you'll see the little birds, the wagtail type birds that pick the shrimps off. They come running out before a big landslide. So here's the ammonite pavement. What is left of it? You can see those wonderful limestone layers there with Ammonites called Coroniceros and Areotites bucklandi, all sorts of fossil specimens, including a gastropod here or there, even some plesiosaur bones, ichthyosaur bones have been found in this limestone pavement along the Jurassic coast. A wonderful sight to see, a protected sight for everyone to see, but the sea is doing its worst for wear. It's wearing away quite rapidly. Well, just up ahead here, here is some fossilized wood I've spotted. And you can see some lovely Lime Bay Agate in there with the fossil wood. You can see the Torito borings there, some agatized and silicified fossil wood from the Jurassic Coast, along with Chalcedony. Well, there's a nice patch of iron pyrite ahead of me. The fool's gold on the beach. Let's take a look, see if we can see any of the little ammonites that are also preserved in the iron pyrite. It's quite an overcast day and I can see between the rocks quite well. Look at that little ammonite there, can you spot that? Let's grab that little fossil find up in my hand. It's only small but probably perfectly formed, look at that. I'm going to sieve for these fossils later on and show you a bit of sieving work on the beach to find them. It's always nice to find one, to know that you're getting your eye in, fossil finding along the Jurassic coast. Well, here's an ammonite chamber you can see that's broken and there are some lovely dog to spa calcite crystals there. You can see protruding out of that hollow chamber. Well, can you see what I've spotted up ahead here on this shingle beach? You can see some lovely Lime Bay Agate there, and that's a eroded shell you can see formed in Lime Bay Agate. There's some of the particular holes in the rocks formed by piddocks that drill through the rocks with a sharp beak, secreting a drilling fluid as they rock from side to side going through that limestone. Well, I'm right round in Pinay Bay now. It's a beautiful sight to behold. The lovely cliffs there you can see and the wood up above as part of the undercliff walk and it's turning to autumn you can see the leaves there turning brown I'm wetting this piece of Lime Bay Agate so you can see the lovely purple Chalcedony there and I'll just drop it in the rock pool and then you'll be able to see the lovely formation of Chalcedony in the chert bed in that chert rounded piece of stone and then I'm going to go a bit further up the beach and see what fossils I can spot. And then when I turn tail, I'll show you some of the big fossils on individual rocks as we go down along back towards Lyme Regis. Once again, you can see it's getting rougher and rougher during the day. The sea's really getting up and uh, going to crash in onto the shoreline and uh, 
there is some of the bigger ammonites you spot really quite stacked close together at times on this beach here is more of the dog tooth spa calcite crystals in a hollow chamber on the beach quite a large ammonite that must have been and then broken revealing the crystals inside that calcite here are the lovely ammonites on the beach i can't resist doing a size comparison with this pyrite ammonite versus this large limestone ammonite called Aerotites bucklandii that's being eroded away but still is a beautiful sight to see every day as you pass these big boulders. Here we go, a little patch of iron pyrite that I've uh, sorted out to look in. I can even see a little piece, a fragment of an ammonite there ahead. That's always a good sign, there might be something more in the iron pyrite to find a broken ammonite there that would have been a nice one you can see so i'm going to do some sieving here for susie she likes the sieving videos get some of this iron pyrite up into my sieve and then take it down to the water's edge and go through it sieving away i've chosen this place because the iron pyrite is prevalent also to a bit of mud there you can see where the fossils are probably washing up underneath the pyrite and into the pyrite from it's a bit of the mud there so let's do some of the sieving work here on the beach get as much of the iron pyrite in as possible to go through i can take out the big rocks because they don't mean anything you can see they're just going to get in the way when i'm doing the sieving i need as much of that pyrite in as possible let's dig loads of it in let's fill the whole sieve pot and take it down to the water's edge, like I said, and go through it with a fine tooth comb. Obviously, some of the smaller ammonites will probably fall through the sieve holes. That's just the way it goes. Take out those uh, bits. There's a bit of chert, chert rock on the beach. That's made of sponge spines. Probably bits of flint as well in places. So I'm getting the sieve pot pretty heavy. That's quite a lot there at the moment. A bit more on top before I go down and test this lot out. Right, let's take it down, see what we got. Well, here we go. A lot of patience to sieve this pot of iron pyrite through and look for the little ammonites too hopefully some other different fossils may occur as i go down into the pyrite and fossil around in it now i'm going to clear through quite a bit of this material today and see what i can find but this looks very very promising there's a lot of pyrite in this sieve pot so it's time to start thumbing through and see, there's a fossil oyster shell that's one of the oyster shells devil's toenails they refer to those with myth and legend back along so as i delve deeper into this sieve pot hopefully i'm going to find one of the perfect little pirate ammonites that is the prize as always but you never know what will come up and uh, i have had some interesting finds during the summer someone found a really nice backbone of an ichthyosaur a really good sized one just sitting in the middle of the sieve pot the ichthyosaur grew up to 60 feet and swam as fast as a tuna fish and it was a good sized one just in all that sieving material that developed you saw the ammonites come out of the sieve pot then it was said look at this what is this and it was a really nice backbone just sitting there absolutely in the middle fairly pristine not much damage done by the attrition of the sand and sea here's another little fossil find one in pyrite a bit uh off that one is that's not looking so good but i'll keep on sieving and then when i get right to the bottom of the sieve pot i'll turn the sieve pot over and look from underneath and see what crops up I don't know why it is, but when I get one of these green potting sieves right the way full and I sieve right through it, I always expect to find something. I always never ever expect to find nothing, even if it's just a piece of a fragment of a fossil, just a, a piece of an ammonite, just a, a chamber of an ammonite even. I always think I'm going to get some sort of fossil to see and often I'm quite surprised. Yet another oyster shell in the same patch of iron pyrites. That's two of the oyster shells. 
as I get towards the end of the sieving of a batch of material, I always contemplate the small ammonites that must have gone through the sieve holes. Sometimes the really tiny ones just drop through and that's it, you're not gonna find those. Sometimes they're so small that uh, you can't even hardly spot them on the beach unless you're on your hands and knees crawling along for them. So I've tipped this sieve pot over and I'm gonna look in and see what's there in the sieve pot. There's a small fossil I can see of a sea lily. It looks like a little star. What a beautiful little find that is. I'm really pleased with that. That's a uh, ossicle of the crinoid. The sea lilies you find along the Jurassic coast can be really, really well preserved. And that one is, look at that, a fossil find that's made my day. Even though it's small, it's still a really wonderful find and not too badly eroded either. Also too, look at this, a little cluster of ammonites on that shovel of mine. So sometimes with the pyrite, you find more than one on the piece of pyrite itself. So that's a fossil find that's fun. Here, walking back along the ledges, you can see those really large cliffs. And that's why I'm staying away from them, just because of the danger element. And the sea is getting up more and more as I walk down along the coast here, back towards Lyme Regis. I always try and avoid the green, weedy, slippery spots on the ledges as I walk back towards Lyme Regis. And as I do, I remember some of the lovely areas where I found some amazing fossil finds in the past and remember some of the scenes where I found those fossils. It's like jaws of an ichthyosaur and paddles of an ichthyosaur. It's been a wonderful walk along the Jurassic coast to see these large ammonites. I always like spotting these. You can see the chambers there, the creature filled with water or gas to give its buoyancy in the sea. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Giving us some likes and some comments in the comment section always helps to boost these posts and that will help us with our channel. These videos are all free for you to view and we'll make these during the winter months when we get some larger storms roll in and some windy weather will bring the big seas in and wash out some good fossils for you to see. So I'll keep taking my camera out and doing some films for you. So please give us some likes and thumbs up if you enjoyed this fossil hunting video along the Jurassic coast at low tide.